I wasn't going to react to this video because it is 30 minutes long, but I already reacted to two of their videos about them getting pregnant, so I might as well finish it off. I will be editing this video to make it shorter. I will be skipping all the unnecessary information. Let's get to it. Lauren and Steph uploaded a video called how we got pregnant on the first try as a lesbian couple. This tattoo here, the tree, is actually the tree of life. And then if you see that spiral, pink and blue, that is the symbol of infertility awareness. I have a lot of tattoos and they all mean something, but that's what that one stands for. All right, let's go ahead and react. Are y'all ready? Cause I am. Let's get it. Morning sickness. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want you to do it by yourself either. Since I mean, you told me better. to though, but yeah. I know that this. I don't know. I just feel like this is a video that we should both do yeah. because we both experienced. I'm feeling a little better. I'm not 100, percent but yeah, Are you going to I, I'm good enough to do this video. Like, what's yeah, I'll probably do a video in the future. I don't know when. Okay. Well, stay tuned for it. what was going on with me, but I'm good, y'all. Document it. It's always good to document, you know? You can tell by the title of this video. Because if you have a memory like mine, 15, 20 years from now, I'm gonna forget everything I did in my life. But when I watch back on my videos, I'd be like, oh, shit, that's right. I remember that now. We're going to be telling you guys how we got pregnant, how we got pregnant fast, how we got pregnant on the first try for everybody that didn't know the reason we wanted to do this video is because honestly a lot of people have been asking whether it's just people being nosy <laughs> or people just really want to know because you feel me they trying to conceive or want to yeah. in the future and or, some people just don't understand how we got pregnant because we're lesbians yeah, so that's I said, the nosy people. we are here to <laughs> right what's it called mean. educate some there you go. I don't understand how lesbians get pregnant. Also, a lot of people who might have been trying a couple times and have not got it yet, maybe this will mm -hmm. somehow work for you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we just want to get right to this video. You ready? Yes. All right, let's go. All right, so first things first, the first step you want to do, the first thing we did was we figured out what we, like basically, Oh, what way we wanted to do it. Yeah, what way we wanted to do it. Like, you know, there's obviously the plenty of options out there. You got IVF. IUI and then ICI. I think it's another I C I don't know. It's like different procedures where you like go to a clinic and they like basically do it for you. They will put sperm into you if that's the way you want to do it. Some people have trouble getting pregnant and not just lesbians. It could be a, a straight couple and they do go to a clinic to try and better their chances where they And there's also people who are single that want to be single mothers, single fathers. You are able to still do it through the clinic, but everyone who goes through the clinic has to get psychologically evaluated. They ain't trying to have babies out here being raised by some fucked up people, you know what I'm saying? I did IUI. I tried six times, for those that don't know. The sperm. Unsuccessful, obviously. It could be a, a straight couple, they do go to a clinic to try and better their chances, where they stick the sperm directly into the egg, and obviously, higher chances of getting pregnant. I'm not sure which one is which, but- IVF like, is when they like fertilize the egg. Fertilize the egg for yeah, you. But that costs a lot. It does cost a lot of money. That's not what we did. So IVF is when you extract eggs from the female and sperm from the male. They put them together in the clinic and they create embryos. Then with that embryo, they actually put it back in to the female, hoping that it will catch and get you pregnant. That's IVF. And yes, it is really expensive. This is why I did six IUIs. I could not afford one IVF. And IVF, you have 50% chance to get pregnant. IUI is 30%. And age is a factor. Stress is a factor. There's so many things that play into that. Yeah, or the option that we did, which was at home, Insemination. Insemination, and which you do it yourself. We did it ourselves at home. I knew yeah. it. And a lot of y'all probably surprised that we did that. But nah. That's the way we did it because we just... I'm not surprised. Let me take you back into time and show you what I said. Because they don't have an appointment and Steph said that she has to call the clinic, then that means they didn't go through the clinic to do this. So I'm thinking they did the insemination themselves. I know a little bit. I've been right thus far. Y'all just don't like me. 
That's all. <laughs> like it was the best option for us. We didn't want any doctors involved or anything. And it's just like, like that. I don't know. It's just like it's not. Even, I don't know. It's just like a lot of money. But I'm saying there's cheaper options, but for us it was just like we never tried before. So right. it's just like, like let's just try. Let's see. Just try to see. What like happens. I feel like the other procedures are for like when maybe you've tried and you just can't. Right. Get it. So you just okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're just not comfortable doing that. Right, but for us, we want to just do it ourselves. And that's okay. Honest. So, second thing you want to do, the most critical thing you need to do, because obviously, unfortunately, we can't make babies by ourselves. So we need sperm. You have to get a sperm donor. Whether Sorry. it is going to a sperm bank mm -hmm. uh, online, they have sperm banks online where you can order the sperm, and it literally get sh and it'll literally get shipped to your house in mm -hmm. like this big like frozen thing like i think it's like a nitrogen thing where it's like frozen and yep. you take it out let it thaw out and then mm -hmm. use it or you can get a known donor which is when you ask somebody that you might know find so that's what i did i went to a sperm bank i actually bought my sperm online it gets shipped directly to the clinic they actually do a sperm count and they also check the mobility of the sperm body i don't know and you ask them and if they're willing to do it basically they come do their thing and give you their sperm in a cup or something though you can have a known donor and do it um you know through like the through IVF and stuff like yeah, that yeah you can do it that way but mm -hmm. basically just figure out if you want a straight up anonymous person or do you want a known sperm donor in yeah. our case we got a known sperm. we got a known sperm donor because it was the most comfortable for us mm -hmm. um we honestly one reason is because we looked on the sperm bank websites and yeah. everything and it is very hard finding someone who that has yeah. my characteristics yeah. it just didn't happen or just like, like Oh, just like seeing in general, like a lot of the times you have to pay for their baby pictures yeah. or they don't have a mm -hmm. lot of adult pictures. Like you can't, you don't really know. I'm wondering if they have medical insurance because if they don't, I can see why they chose this route. I have medical insurance. So they covered my procedure and a percentage of my doctor visits, but they did not cover my sperm donor. And that's where it cost me a lot of money. It actually cost me a thousand dollars each time to get that sperm. And everything she's saying about paying a little extra to look at baby pictures and stuff like that, it's really not that much more. Online, you literally pay only $50 for that whole month to look into all the sperm donors. There's a lot of information that they actually give you and this is why I chose this route. They show you baby pictures, they give you their medical information, their medical background, and then that's including their siblings, medical information their parents their grandparents medical information because then it shows you genetically what your baby might or possibly have such as cancer diseases it also gives you their ethnicity if they're tobacco users if they're drinkers it shows you what, what type of career they are in the education that they have and there's also voice recordings of them answering some questions like what their hobbies are and you can tell in their voices too what kind of personalities that they have so they give you a lot of information and quite honestly i believe that it's the safest way to pick a donor because they go so in depth into every detail to make sure that you know what you're getting yourselves involved with when having a baby from their sperm for me it was a little bit uncomfortable just like asking people because it's like <laughs> it's something that's like kind of sensitive so some people are like oh i don't want to do that or like, you know and not everybody's gonna say yes to you. It was kind of like a trial and everything. Yeah. I'll ask somebody, they would say no. I'll ask somebody, they would say yes, and then they would bail. So like, it took a while for, for me sure. to actually find yes. somebody I that was it. willing to do it all. Like, okay, I'm willing to, whenever you guys want to do it, however many times you guys need to do it. So we were lucky that we finally yeah. found somebody. Cause and y'all are probably like, don't be scared to get told no. Like, yeah. You're probably going to get told no. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got find a lucky like, person on the first try, yeah. but we've got told no. Not in like a harsh <laughs> way, but some people just aren't comfortable and you yeah. have to be okay with that at the end of the day. It makes sense. But luckily we found someone who was willing to do it and willing to help us out. And the good thing about it is we share similar characteristics. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part. I really hope that whoever this sperm donor is that you guys have in writing or some form of legal document stating that this person is giving you all parental rights to that baby. Because if you don't do that later on, it could be years, it could be months from now, it could be years from now, that sperm donor can actually fight for custody or visitation rights with that child. Picking a sperm donor from a sperm bank, you can choose to pick someone who will be anonymous, which was something that I was originally planning on doing, 
because I just don't want my child to know anybody else but me and my wife as their mamas. That's it. We're the ones that raised you. We're the ones that fought for you. We're the ones that worked hard to get you and love you. I don't want someone coming, coming around when he or she is 17 years old saying, hey, I'm your daddy. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. But then as I got into it, I decided to pick who is willing to meet with the child if the child is curious to know who this person is. So basically, when the child turns 18 years old, they have the option to actually meet the sperm donor and get to know a little bit about themselves through the donor. And if you get a known sperm donor, matter of fact, while we're on this topic, let's go into what you probably need to do when you have a known sperm donor. So make sure you got all your paperwork right. Um, okay. <laughs> the attorneys involved. Okay. Do what you gotta do to feel comfortable. Make sure you 100% trust the person because at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of things that go into it. And you wanna trust the person that they're not gonna, you know, turn around and be like, ah, I want something to do with the baby. You know what I'm saying? Did. So basically like what she's saying is like, you have to get a contract mm -hmm. stating that clearly the person's only a sperm donor. They're not gonna be a parent. They're not, they're not responsible. Unless you want that. Now, if Unless you, you want that, it. Make that in y'all paperwork, but for us, we don't want yeah, that. Clearly, yeah, like, it's no you. relationship, no responsibility, like, none of that. She's going to be on the birth certificate. She's going to be the second parent type of thing. Like, no, oh, I want the kid. Like, no, it's clearly yeah. just strictly you're a donor. You're helping us out. And make sure that they understand that that's what it is. It's just they're mm -hmm. helping you get pregnant, basically. That's it. All right, good. Yeah. And make good it for also you guys. very clear if you don't want this person to be known. Make sure it's very clear that you, you are. This keep it anonymous. Keep it, keep it between mm -hmm. you guys. Nobody else can know. We will never disclose our sperm donor. Yeah. They will never disclose us. Um, so that's something you guys will never know. We will never speak on them. You guys will never know what he looks like, his name, any of good. that. Right. It's just not happening. Um, but what I do find a little interesting is this is a person that you know that means this person is around. I don't know if I'd be able to do that. To have my child around the sperm donor and just looking at him knowing that he is part of my child, to see him every now and then is like, I could not do that. And even for him, him even looking at the child like, damn, that's a product of me. I just couldn't do it. So yeah, make sure y'all get all that together. Make sure it. they get STD tested. Yes, you want to make that's sure important. That make sure you you yeah, make saying. sure that you see the results. If you are not able to like go with them and be there, make mm -hmm. sure that you see their results, their name on it, the date, everything. Make yep. sure they are clean. Cause the last thing you want to do is put some sperm in you that like, infected with something, yes. and then you get and all that comes out. That's also what the sperm bank does. They do STD testing. A lot of trust. You have to yeah. trust this person. You know what I'm saying. Their and, medical background. Yeah. And they also do STD testing on the patient as well. So So the next thing you want to do is if you're going to do it soon, you want to start getting healthy. You want to um, Vitamins. Smoking if you smoke. Yeah, vitamins. All that. Um, just kind of get your body prepared. And our Facts. Vitamins, uh, stress levels, make sure it's low. Eat well, exercise. Steph started taking prenatals right. um, about 30 days before, maybe like mm -hmm. a month before. Next thing you want to do is you want to track your ovulation. Yes. This is literally the biggest mm -hmm. thing, thing you that can you do. can do. Like yeah. this is the number one thing that you need to do. Honestly, in our case, we kind of got lucky because Y'all, we were just all over the place with it. Like, we didn't track our ovulation for a long time. I yeah. think we tracked it for I'm one month. And some people track it for a long time. time they're yeah. trying to get it perfect. In mm -hmm. our situation, we, we didn't have time, time because our <laughs> sperm donor is, is, a, is a busy person. So, mm -hmm. like, he, his schedule was all over the place. And we didn't have much time. We're in different states. Mm -hmm. So, we basically had oh, to damn. do whatever. Everything was very last minute. So, we didn't have a lot of time to plan yeah. it out. But it ended up working out for us. Yeah. So, for us... Um, so we tried in February. That means you tracked it in January. Yes. But the day she started tracking it was I the day already, she yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we tracked, we tracked it with this. A lot of people do like strips right. or anything like that. This is basically a digital one mm -hmm. where <clears throat> you would pee on the little thingy and then you would insert it into this and it'll mm -hmm. have like It'll, oh. it'll tell you. That's what the clinic did for me. I didn't have to check it myself. It takes about a good month before the procedure actually happens. So what they do is they do blood work, they do ultrasounds, um, they check my ovulation. When you're ovulating, you best to put 
some sperm in there because mm -hmm. you want to fertilize your egg. Yeah, so, so like very little scientific, but very scientific. Yeah, like, I got it. Yo, this is so something we learned so much through yeah, this process. So so. I'm honestly surprised that you guys did do your research. I thought y'all just woke up one day and was like, let's get pregnant because you are young and you guys didn't really talk too much about it. All of a sudden you just hit us with a video. I'm pregnant. <laughs> so I'm glad that you guys did all your research and you did do things the right way. Anyways, we tried it for one day, she peaked. We knew it was um, around that time. Yeah. So the next month came, which was the month we were going to try. Yes, and because yes. our donor was in another state, we had to, you know, fly away. We obviously had to fly there. So this is crazy, y'all. This is Damn. really crazy. We didn't have any other choice yeah. but to get there on that day. Yeah, because if we didn't get there on that day, we probably weren't going to get there. Right. We felt like that day was like the day that no, we had to do it. We needed to get it in there. There was really going to be no chance mm -hmm. of it. So. Honestly, if you guys chose to do this route because for financial reasons, it sounds like you paid around the same amount I did going through the clinic. With the flights and everything, yeah, y'all play, y'all pay the same amount of money. <laughs> it happened, we got there in the afternoon and that's when this whole process started. So we're gonna tell y'all the whole process of the- And you guys probably didn't even have to do what I did. If you went through the clinic doing ICI, you probably still would've gotten pregnant the first time. You guys are young, you're very fertile. So there's a lot of ways that you can inseminate. We chose to use something called- um, Soft. A soft cup. So, we thought it was the best option because um, the way it sits in your, sorry, TMI, the way it sits in your um, area, and it's kind of done, perfect. It, it keeps it the, in. It presses up right against the, the cervix, cervix, which is kind of where you want the sperm to be. Yes. You can use syringes, but we just found that these probably would be a little bit more effective. Yes. yes. But we've had heard success stories on the syringes as well. Oh, so pick the option that's best for you. But this is what we used. The syringe is the turkey baster method. Uh, it looks like this. I don't know if y'all can see it because of lighting, but it's just a little thing, like a, a little cuff, basically. It's for your, you know, your period. cycle, your yeah. period. But you can use it for this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's like this, so you like kind of squeeze it, and then like, let's say this is your little job. It's kind of like a female condom, if you've seen those. Put it in there. Put it in there. Look up a YouTube video. Yeah, just look up a YouTube video. But basically, the sperm donor, what he did was he just did his thing directly into this. Oh wait, we skipped a step though. Let's 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 tell them what we did before he even put the, oh, yeah, the yeah, sperm in there. Yeah, so yeah. before he even put the sperm in there, guys, you want to use this. It's called pre-seed. Now you don't have to use it. Um, we just heard a lot of success stories on it and decided to use it because we thought it would give us the best mm -hmm. chance. But basically, it's a lubricant which mm -hmm. helps the, the sperm, sperm like swim faster. Yeah, get to where they need. And apparently, it doesn't kill the sperm like right. a lot of other lubricants do. Yes. So we found that we found a lot of success stories with this. So we thought this was the best thing to use. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's something I didn't know. When he got to. Um, where we was at, basically hotel. <laughs> <laughs> at the hotel. <laughs> just went in the bathroom. We kind of just stepped out so we couldn't, you know, bother him. Mm -hmm. because he didn't Let him do his thing. Him or nothing. So Let him do his thing. He directly, you know, Inserted. did his Inserted. little thing and in there. In there right. And then as soon as he finished, he just put his hand over it because, you know, you Keep don't want warm. to die. You don't want no air and mm -hmm. oxygen and stuff getting in there. Though, so, sorry. I don't know if that really like matters if you put your hand over it or not. I don't know, y'all. I don't know, days. but you have we to keep we it warm. More comfortable. We was like, okay, let's just save the sperm. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, we told him as soon as you do, you have to hurry up because we don't want the sperm to die. We mm -hmm. still need you to get out, and we need to. And <laughs> yeah. So you know, so he did that in there, and then as soon as he finished, he called us and he gave it to us, and then he left, and then mm -hmm. we did our thing. Basically, she put it in. Yeah. Me. So. This is more TMI, but I'm going to tell y'all how I got my baby pregnant. You feel me? You feel me? Because I am pregnant her, y'all. I don't get twisted. So, basically, you want to just squeeze it in there. And it literally conforms, like, right onto yeah. it. So, like, when it's in there, it, like, does its thing right. by itself. It, you know, it, really it to fits do. your body. It's, it's just, like, hooked in. in there. You just have to push yeah. it in. And it looks but, a little scary to me. It looked a little scary. Like, how's it going to me? But, like, literally. Girl, we put sweet. tampons. Yes. Slide. We put tampons in our punani. This ain't nothing. Into your parts, it just 
and, and make sure in your cervix so it's like cool. yeah and make sure you don't spill in and you want to yeah. you know what i'm saying get as much in there as possible it only takes one, one sperm. sperm and that's all little, it takes there's like freaking millions of sperm and that's just not one little guy 20 and you know there's millions of them you know we got a lot and we felt like oh yeah. shoot this is a lot yeah. like you know what I'm saying? you did your thing but <laughs> don't get like discouraged if your donor doesn't give a lot because you know what i'm saying it will probably still work. It's fine. Put it in there. But yeah, we put it in there. And then once we did that, I sat up with my legs literally mm -hmm. against like the wall. And my legs mm -hmm. like up here. With some um, A pillows. pillow under like my lower back. So mm -hmm. that way like it can drip, it can drip down yeah. into wherever it needs to go and help your little swimmers yeah. go. You definitely so, want to do that. That's what they do in the clinic. They actually level up the bed and have you lay there for a while. I sat with that like that for an hour. My legs were numb and all. I was like, telling her, <laughs> you gotta oh, do God. it. You gotta <laughs> do it. But I sat like that for an hour, and then since it was like the evening, I even slept with the cup inside of me just mm -hmm. to make sure. I mean, sure. she took it out in the middle of the night, but yeah. these cups can stay in up to 12 hours. So as long as you don't yeah. go over 12 hours, you're fine. But yeah. if you want to keep it in for whatever reason, it was just the evening for us. We kept it in for a Yeah, we kept it in just because yeah. like, you can take it out after an hour or however long you want to keep it in. But I was just like, okay, let's it's, just keep it in. It's a mental just, thing. Just yeah. just in Help case, swimmer, you know? Get to where they need to go. Right. So she had the cup in and with her legs propped up for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now she didn't want to talk about this, but it's okay. Like, you know what I'm it's fine. What, what you want to do about 30 minutes when it's in there is you want to bring yourself to a climax. Big O. You want to bring yourself to <laughs> or an orgasm. Or so okay. basically, what that does, y'all, when you have an orgasm, obviously, it's kind of like your muscles contract and it's kind of like a suction. Yeah. So while that's in you, touch your cervix and you orgasm, it's going to kind of yeah. like suck the sperm up. So. You don't have to, but have I think to. it really does help get the sperm going. So yeah. I think it, I, I don't I think it played a big factor. Yeah. I don't know how I felt like it did, <laughs> but um yeah, yeah you definitely Look at you were trying to get all that credit, girl. Do that. Um and then yeah, like I said, take it out whenever, but I definitely recommend keeping it in for at least forty five minutes to an hour. We tried again the next day, but right. we really felt like the first day was the day that we actually right. got. But we did do it twice. We do yeah. recommend if you can do, do it more, than, more than, once. than once because it get obviously gives you a better shot. Um for some people that's what I did on my fifth and sixth attempt. I went inside the clinic to get the fifth one, and then the next day I went in to get the sixth one. We're just doing it once, but right. we recommend doing it more than once. More than and like we said, we recommend doing it before you actually ovulate yes. because yes. it might give you a better chance because yes. the sperm do live inside of you. Um, we just didn't have the chance to, unfortunately. We <laughs> yeah, we were ready for it. Everything still. Yeah, everything worked out. It worked out. out. Yeah. Yeah. It worked out. Y'all got pregnant. Yeah. So but that was it. And then. That's God's you plan. Wait. After that, literally, was you it wait. 10 days later? No, no but let's tell them about the two week wait. Yeah, you wait till you have to wait two weeks because obviously you don't know if your period's gonna come or if you're gonna be pregnant. But I'm not gonna say I recommend waiting two weeks because it's the hardest thing ever. Yeah, but just know hard. if you do take it early that there. It is, like I said in the last video, it, those two weeks are the worst. Every day wondering if you're pregnant. Every day having to wait. And for me, it sucked. After the two weeks were over and I got my pregnancy test, all six times were negative. Imagine. Ucha. There's a chance that you could get a negative because your hormones aren't built, built up, yet. up yet. So if you taking it like maybe a week after, just keep testing until yeah. your period. But if you are going to take it early, make sure that you know that you might get a negative. Like mentally prepare okay. yourself because it would be like, you know what I'm saying, very heartbreaking oh. if you didn't. I don't know. And when I took it, I was like, okay, if it's not positive. Right, she like, went I'm into it gonna, knowing yeah. that it might be negative because it's early. So yeah. make sure that you guys know that. But that two week Two week wait mm -hmm. is different. Yeah, you're not thinking different. every day like, am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? Yeah. Uh, oh, and a big thing that you want to do too after you try is you want to bring back memories. The most positive thoughts mm -hmm. ever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Speak to the baby. I was yeah. speaking to her stomach as soon as that thing was in. There. I did too, I was girl. Go swimming up in there. You know what I'm saying? I did too. I was speaking to I was speaking to mine, but there was nobody in there. I was like, hello, you in there? Hello? Just have positive energy, <laughs> even through the weight, have positive energy. Um, it's going to be very hard because you're going to just be wondering. You're going to be looking for these symptoms that are just MIA that you don't get, but you feel like, I don't know. It's just, y'all, it's a lot of things that go on in that two-week wait. But, um, but yeah, guys, that's how we did it. Now my baby over here pregnant. And going she's pregnant. Through it. <laughs> yeah, she's going through it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, guys, with all that being said, we're going to be back with more videos. All right. You guys did a great job explaining 
everything. All right, you guys, tell me what you thought about this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please hit that bell so you can get notified every time I upload. See you in the next video. Peace. Okay. Huh? Babe? Okay.